Hello, my name is Ashley Hernandez, and today I'll be talking about the oscillations about equilibrium. I chose to speak a little bit about every um, thing in this topic since I found it interesting. So first off, what are oscillations? Oscillations are the back and forth motions from one side of the equilibrium position to the other. In this case, we use the little pendulum um, figure. And right here, you can see that it's in the resting state or the stable equilibrium um, state. And once it is moved to the right a little bit, um, the restoring force applies. And it, the restoring force always wants to try to get to the equilibrium, which is like in towards the middle. So once it is let go, it goes towards that side. However, um, due to the acceleration, the momentum, and the speed, um, it doesn't necessarily stop at the middle and it keeps on going. So once it reaches this side, the restoring force is here and it wants to reach towards the other side. So it keeps on going back and forth, back and forth, and that's what oscillations significantly mean. The next, um, I'll go into a little bit more into depth of the oscillations by the periodic motion. The periodic motion is a motion that repeats itself over and over again. So in this case, it could be like a heart, um, your heartbeat or a child like swing, moving back and forth and back and forth. Um, uh, in order to measure, or like one of the uh, measurements of like a uh, periodic motion is one cycle. So how to measure one, um, one cycle is a period. So if you were to move from here, to the other side, it will be considered a cycle. So um, a period is the time required for one cycle of periodic motion. Um, the unit is seconds over a cycle, which equals S. And another um, type of measurement that's also used in the periodic motion is the frequency. No. <laughs> okay, so another common um, measure of periodic motion is frequency. Frequency is uh, frequency over is one over time of the oscillation period. So basically, it's kind of like an inverse version of what period really means. Um, frequency unit is s, which is equals to s. Um, sorry, to the negative one power, and it is measured in hertz, where one hertz equals one cycle over a second. Um, I did add a problem exercise to this, which is the exercise 13.1, and it says the processing speed of a computer refers to the number of binary operations it can perform in one second, so it is really at frequency. If the processor of a personal computer operates at 1.8 gigahertz, how much time is required for one processing cycle? So basically, they give us the frequency since it's the 1.8 gigahertz, um, but the equation is the frequency equals one over um, t. So we have to find t in this case, so we just inverse and the t equals one over frequency. So you in, uh, input the one equals 1.8 gigahertz in the bottom. However, since they are using gigahertz in this occasion, we will have to um, convert it into hertz. So we have to one gigahertz equals 10 over, um, to the ninth power. So you have to multiply the 1.8 gigahertz to the 10 to the 9 power, and you uh, I'll put it in the bottom of the one, and it should equal to 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10 s. That is basically the periodic motion. A uh, big part of the periodic motion, which is a, like a type of it, is a simple harmonic motion. Uh, an example of the simple harmonic motion is an air track car of mass attached to a spring force constant. <clears throat> Excuse me. In this case, um, I drew a little car at a surface which is attached to, attached to a spring. In this case, it's at resting state since its equilibrium length is um, it's just an equilibrium, basically. Um, the restoring force always points towards the equilibrium position. So when you um, were to if you take the cart and pull it or push it towards the spring or um, pull it um, against the spring, you were to have a force acting upon it. So it would have it will create motion basically, um, and it has the maximum um, on both directions, um, the maximum maximum displacement. In this case, equal um, the max the minimum the maximum in this side would be the negative a and the maximum will be the positive A. The zero um, indicates its resting state.
So right here you can see how the force is going that side and it's going from the negative A towards the positive A and it continues the oscillations as it goes. Um, if you were to add like tape and put a pen, attach a pen to it and then the paper behind it, it will create um, the oscillations which are shown over here on the top. These um, include the amplitude. The amplitude is um, the displacement on either side of the equilibrium, um, which is half total range of motion. As you can see here, um, it includes one amplitude and then the other one, and then it goes so on and so forth, which creates a wave. Um, in the bottom, we show the negative A and then the positive A, which is shown right here, which is shown right here. It's basically the same thing, but sideways, and it shows how um, the movement actually creates that. Um, and it basically goes on by the displacement or um, towards times of time. So here you can see how um, we put the position versus time and simple harmonic motion, which is a little bit more into depth of what that actually means. In this case, um, we got an equation which equals x. If x equals a cosine um, t, 2 pi over t um, and lowercase, times lowercase t. Its unit equals meters. Um, I also added another um, problem for this one. It states, an air track can a, an air track car attached to a spring completes one oscillation every 2.4 seconds. At t equals zero, the car is released from re from rest at a distance of 0.10 meters from its equilibrium position. What is the position of the car at? And I put the a, so it should be at 0.30 seconds. So we have the lowercase t for the time at the time, so it's just the 0.30 seconds. They also include the um, A, which is the 0.10 meters, and the big T, which is the 2.4 seconds. So in this case, we just include, we just input like the information that we got, and A equals the 0.10 meters times cosine 2 pi, <coughs> I'm sorry, um, over the 2.4, which is right here, times the 0.30 seconds, and the answer should be 7.1 centimeters. And that's how basically we, we use the equation for the position versus time and simple harmonic motion. Next up is the connections between the uniform circular motion and the simple harmonic motion, which, which is what we went over before. Now this time we're going to use um, the circular motion. So um, since it's circular, it's going to be the constant angular speed, which is W equals 2 pi over T. In this case, we use a record player and a record um, spinning. Um, as you can see here, we have the negative A um, position and the A positive A. In the middle is also the resting. And um, in the record, they apply the peg, which is the X equals A cosine of um, theta. And the peg um, is used uh, so you can see like the shadow of the, basically of the motion. Um, they use flashlights here in this part in the bottom, and that's how they can notice. They can track like, the motion. Um, and the circular motion, they are very important in the position, velocity, and acceleration towards the circular motion of the um, object. So in position, um, the theta equals wt. There's angular, the angular position increases linearly with time. And it's simple harmonic equation is the position of the shadow as a function in time, which is the x equals a cosine theta. As we see here, theta equals wt, so we can replace the a cosine, the theta, instead of the theta, we can put the wt, and later expands to the 2 pi over t um, times the other t, which we can see here in the top part. Um, velocity is the velocity equals radius times the constant angular speed. And its um, simple harmonic equation would be the a the um, negative a um, constant angular speed sine times wt. Velocity does equal zero in its um, turning points since they are okay. So for example, right here, if the um, when it was rotating, it will um, create like the maximum points on both sides. So like once. Um, the velocity reaches to the negative side, it wants to turn around. So when it turns around, it becomes um, zero here and then it goes to the next one. 
and so on and so forth. The acceleration, um, the equation is the acceleration centripetal force equals R W squared, and it's hormonal, um, simple harmonic motion equation equals negative A W squared cosine W T. The direction of the acceleration is always towards the center when it's, very, um, it's in a circular motion. Um, so basically the connection between the uniform circular motion and the simple harmonic motion is that um, they use the results from the position, the velocity, and the acceleration between both um, equations that go under the simple harmonic motion. So the, they basically have like, um, these two equations have things in common that go be on between the circular motion and the simple harmonic motion. Also, um, angular frequency, which is shown right here, is the W equals 2 pi F, or frequency, and this can later derive to the 2 pi equals um, over T of the oscillations. This is when it's referring to the simple harmonic motion or other periodic motions that have a slightly different name for W instead of um, how I said here, the constant angular speed. Next up is the period of a mass on a spring. So the period on a mass of a spring is basically these two equations, which is the F equals negative constant times X and the F equals uh, mass times acceleration. So um, you get um, the MA from the force equals mass times A and the negative KX from the F equals negative K um, constant times X. And you basically know, since we found out from the bottom part here, that acceleration does equal the um, negative a w2 squared cosine of wt so we just replace the a with the negative a w2 cosine wt and on this side we know that the x equals um, a cosine wt which we did the same here we put it the a cosine with the wt so um, now we will get rid of like the similar factors in this case it would be the a cosine and the negative of both and wt. So we end up with m times w2 equals k. And you end up moving the m to this side, which causes is um, the w2 equals k over m. And then you do the square root for both sides, and the w ends up equaling to constant over um, mass, which now goes on to this side. Um, bottom part, which is the period of a mass on a spring. So period on a mass on a spring is basically this equation on a nutshell. You just um, get this and just add t to um, pi, sorry. So t equals 2 pi um, square root mass over um, k, constant. So I did add another um, problem for this part, which states when a 0.22 kilogram air track car is attached to a spring, it oscillates with a period of 0.84 seconds. What is the force constant for this spring? So they're trying to look for the force constant, which is K. And they did give us the mass, which is a 0.22 kilograms. And they gave us the T, which is a 0.84 seconds. So basically, you do the algebraic equation for the you do algebra for this and you um, solve for k. In this case, is k equals four pi squared times mass. Excuse me, um, over t squared. Now we just input the information that they give us, which is four pi squared times the 0.22 kilograms over the 0.84 seconds squared, and it should equal 12 n or m. Um, here in the bottom, these are some factors affecting motion of mass on spring. So in this case, we see, get to see the different factors that are um, inputted and how it like changes its um, oscillation and frequency basically. So over here we have the normal one. Um, here we have an increase in constant by a factor of four. 
as you can see, the increase in constant, it increases the force constant causing the mass to oscillate with a greater frequency. So instead of um, being like this, like more white, it would be more like um, more closer up to each other. This one, it is the increase of mass by a factor of four. So the increase of mass um, lowers the frequency of oscill oscillation. So instead of being like a little bit higher than the normal one, and then this one as well, um, it becomes a little bit lower, and that's how it ends up like the oscillation. Next up is the increase of amplitude by a factor of two. The amplitude is an increase in amplitude has no effect on the oscillation frequency. However, it will increase the maximum speed and maximum acceleration of the mass. As you can see, this is kind of like how usually you can see in the other two, which is a little bit more normal, but it's just um, faster. And in this case, it is the increase of the constant plus the mass by a factor of four. So an increase, if the force constant and the mass are both increased by the same factor, the effects described in parts A and B cancel, resulting in no change in the motion. So this is most commonly, um, like the most common, like the first one, um, that the factors don't usually, if they're both of them, they usually don't like um, change a lot. And yeah, those are, that is the oscillations about equilibrium.